Baited therapy has essentially, or should have essentially, disappeared for APL. Once you're done with the four, six months, six months, let's say, of, of, of therapy with arsenic and atra, uh, then there's no reason to continue the therapy. Um, for many years, there was maintenance therapy, and it would go on for two years. But as the drugs became more effective, there became less need for maintenance therapy, and that's a general phenomenon. If the drugs that you use initially are more effective, then there's less need for maintenance therapy. After patients complete their treatment, both induction and consolidation, we do repeat a bone marrow biopsy to confirm that they are in remission. With that bone marrow, we also check for the PMLR alpha by PCR. For patients with low or intermediate risk disease, after that we can continue to monitor the peripheral blood by PCR only. Given that those patients have such a low risk for relapse, peripheral blood PCR monitoring is usually adequate. However, for patients with high-risk APL, we may consider doing bone marrow biopsies and also checking for the PMRR alpha by PCR. In the arsenic era, however, most of those patients, whether high-risk, intermediate-risk, or low-risk, the chances for relapse are, relapse are very, very small. So peripheral blood monitoring by PCR is most likely adequate in all patients. Relapse of APL almost never occurs in people who present with low white counts. It may occur in 5 or 10 percent of people who have high white counts. The best indicator of relapse is the molecular test that this pathognomonic of APL, the so-called PML-RAR-alpha test, molecular test, becomes positive. And it generally becomes positive maybe several months before actual hematologic relapse. So in people who are at risk of relapse, which is people who have high white counts, not low white counts, generally a bone marrow is obtained every three months. And if the test becomes positive, they're considered to have molecular relapse, which eventually inevitably turn, translates into hematologic relapse, which eventually would translate into symptomatic relapse just as a presentation. So these days the idea is you want to treat the molecular relapse. Probably another drug we developed in MD Anderson for this purpose was called Mylotarg, uh, which is a very effective drug for APL. And so that's certainly one way of treating molecular relapse. After remission, the chances for relapses are very small when patients receive upfront arsenic. In the studies that were done, the median time to uh, r relapse was about 15 months when patients received arsenic therapy, and it was a little longer than that when patients did not receive arsenic therapy upfront. Well, one of the questions that comes up is a lot depends on how long the first remission lasted. So, for example, if you had a remission that lasted only five or six months, then the likelihood that myelotarg itself would, it, it will work, the patient will go back in remission, but they will relapse again. So at that point, people begin to think of doing a transplant. And that can either be an autologous transplant where the patient's own cells are used or an allogeneic transplant where there's a donor that's not the patient.